Masha, Mudga, and Masura are evidently the most commonly and constantly used grains. Reference to Masha also occurs even in Rigveda, even before the Yajurveda, which I mentioned earlier. Even today, Indian food cannot be imagined without pulses. Dal roti, dal bath, idli, dosa, dokla, besan laddu, burfi, sattu, sev, papads are a part and parcel of our life. Pulses are, the, are thus our lifelines. Pulses are a very important part of human diet, not just in India, but uh, globally, and provide all nutritional and physiological beneficial effects to humans. As we know, they are very rich in proteins, carbohydrates, dietary fiber, and a rich sort of source of sorry, other bioactive components and phytochemicals. Legumes are also, uh, you know, also, they also improve uh, the soil fertility and soil biodiversity and keep harmful pests away. Pulses are crucial in terms of food security, nutritional value, and environmental benefits. These crops are also useful in climate change uh, mitigation since they can reduce dependence on artificial fertilizers for inducing nutrients such as nitrogen in the soil. They are also less water guzzling. Entire plant biomass is useful as food or feed. Pulses continue to form an important part of the lives and sustenance being the poor man's meat. Pulses have less than 20% water footprint and 20 times less carbon dioxide footprint. So therefore they are very, very environmental friendly. In 2013, the UN recognized the importance of these crops and declared 2016 to be the International Year of Pulses. Further, recognizing the importance of pulses towards achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Development Goals SDG set by UN, World Pulses Day is being observed by member nations. In 2019, the UN declared 10 February as World Pulses Day, and today we are celebrating the World Pulses Day. After 2019, 20, 21, and 22, this is the fourth World Pulses Day. World Pulses Day is observed, again as I said, on 10 February to raise awareness about the importance of pulses. The day has been celebrated since 19, 2019 by the United Nations. The day also highlights the need for increased access to these crops among underprivileged sections of the global population. This year, I mean, has been, I think, the last four years also, the theme of World Pulses Day is pulses to empower youth in achieving sustainable agri-food systems. World Pulses Day is celebrated to acknowledge the importance of these crops in various aspects of our lives. As CSAR, CFTRI, we have been focusing on the post-harvest aspects and providing technological solutions to the industry. This day this becomes very important to all of us to see that what is it that we have done, where do we stand, and what is the way forward? We hope to do the same thing during this webinar, also marking Azadeka Amrut Mahotsav. During the corona, we were forced to use oxy pulse meters. Right? For good, uh, let us uh, use the pulse meter today and improve our pulse consumption and better use of these pulses. Thanks for the opportunity provided with hashtag low pulses. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for elaborating the importance of pulses and also for briefing about the World Pulse Day. We are privileged to have our respected director, CSR CFTRE, Dr. Shri Devi Annapurna Singh, madam, in this program. Being an accomplished food technologist, madam has more than three decades of experience, especially in the field of uh, proteins and uh, nutrition. I request you to kindly give your remarks on this occasion, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Rusha. A very good morning to all present. Sri Arjunji, Managing Director, JM Foods Private Limited, Salem. Sri A. Srinivas, Head, Grain Science and Technology Department, CSCR, CFTRI. Sri Satyendra Rao B. V. Head, Technology Transfer and Business Development, CSCR, CFTRI. Dr. A. Jaydeep, Senior Principal Scientist, Grain Science and Technology Department. 
Dr. Usha Dharmaraj and all uh, colleagues uh, present offline here as well as online. Again, a very good morning and a very happy Pulses Day, World Pulses Day. Like uh, uh, Satyendra has already said, uh, pulses are extremely important and today the world has realized it. India has realized it long, long ago, <laughs> but probably uh, the world was a little late in realizing this. And uh, we get up in the morning for an idli or a dhokla, there is a pulse in it. We eat staple dal bath, dal roti, again, we are talking of pulses. On a rainy day, on a cold day, we would love to have pakodas with our chai and there you have pulses all over again. So uh, this is a very, very integral part of the Indian um, uh, diet plan. And um, as uh, already uh, spoken, they are not only nutritious, uh, they are also uh, agriculturally climate friendly. And the world is looking to reduce the carbon footprint uh, because of agricultural uh, practices. And pulses are going to be playing a very, very big role in the coming years to mitigate this. Uh, they are very hardy crops. They can fix nitrogen and therefore uh, they are uh, very useful uh, between uh, other crops to increase the fertility of the soil. They are... Uh, requiring less uh, water to grow and you can also uh, grow two or more crops in the um, uh, soil uh, one after the other two nutritionally they are protein rich crops and the carbohydrate that is there in them is quite complex that means they are low glycemic index and this means that uh, we feel satiety faster and uh, we are going to not feel so hungry. Therefore, for people who are uh, weight watchers or who uh, are looking for cost effective uh, diet plans, these are ideal. Uh, Apart from this, if you look at uh, the legumes and pulses, uh, mainly uh, primary processing and uh, probably conversion to dal and floors is the only processing that is uh, usually done in 90% of the crops, which means that uh, uh, there is not too much of uh, value addition. Nevertheless, they are expensive uh, in Indian terms not so much as compared to uh, animal sources of food. So um, traditionally also uh, we have been, because these are seeds, they do have certain factors in them which are known as anti-nutrients and that affect their uh, digestibility and bioavailability of protein and other uh, nutrients. Nevertheless, uh, traditionally we have tried to use uh, uh, processes like uh, uh, germination or fermentation to improve the digestibility of these uh, uh, flowers. And uh, today, um, when the world is looking for replacing meat and meat products with uh, more sustainable as well as uh, healthy uh, um, uh, products uh, which are made from plant sources, texturization of uh, pulse flowers is also a very big deal. And there is something like 250% increase in plant protein uh, market over the past few years. And uh, more and more uh, startups, even in India, are looking for these solutions as to how we can get meat analogs. And uh, one of the constraints is, apart from the texturization, is, uh, like I said, the digestibility and bioavailability. If these can be improved, then definitely there is going to be huge value addition and uh, the government incentives for doubling farmers income or uh, you know creating export markets and atmanirbharata all of this will fit into the indian scheme of things because india is the major pulse producer and uh, most of our farmers are growing these uh, crops coming to our institute csr cftri uh, we have developed over the few decades a large number of uh, uh, prototypes of machinery for primary processing and uh, definitely I'm sure um, uh, Srinivas will be uh, elaborating more on that. 
and uh, to also uh, address the issue of anti nutrients we have the technologies for making concentrates and isolates so that many of these anti nutrients will be removed which means that they could be very valuable protein ingredients especially for um, supplementary foods where uh, children need their protein and uh, digestibility should not be affected so i am sure that both the speakers will be elaborating more on the processing and value addition and it is going to be really a wonderful session today and i look forward to hearing all the views and uh, all the best and uh, definitely one more uh, time happy pulses day thank you thank you ma'am for bringing out the nutritional importance of pulses and the possible avenues in processing aspects thank you very much uh, today's first speaker shri chini wasay head of the department of grain science and technology uh, being a mechanical engineer by qualification shri chini was has extensively worked on the development of grain processing machineries especially on pulse processing machineries with his vast experience for more than 30 years Shri Shinivas is actively involved in design and development of machineries and also in developing value added products from grains. Today he is going to deliver a technical talk on development of pulse processing machinery and value added products. Over to you sir. Good morning to everyone. Thank you for the uh, nice introduction, Dr. Osha. Um, development of pulse processing machinery and value-added products uh, at CFCRI has been work of uh, quite a few people. It's not just uh, my work that has uh, been, uh, you know, fructified into the processes here. There are a lot of people who have worked on pulses, and quite a few of them have uh, retired. And uh, the importance of pulses has already been highlighted by mr satendra and uh, it is also known very well known that uh, um, cereals are deficient in certain proteins which is only supplemented by pulses and uh, therefore pulses has uh, already told by satendra pulses have been a part of our diet and uh, have they're mentioned even in the vedas so it's that old Can I go to the next one, please? Uh, okay, okay. Thank you. So, if we say grain processing, of which pulses also form a part, you can see that there are so many grains. So, if we take grains, they can be broadly classified into cereals and pulses. And in cereals, you have major coarse and uh, millets that form a part of it. And if you take pulses, there are two major categories that you have: that is, major and minor pulses. So, if you see the number of pulses that uh, are present, can I have the next one? Next slide, please. It's not. It's not going on. Yep. So, if you just see the number of pulses here, uh, some of them are uh, there in our country. Some are not there. Um, in 2016, when I gave a talk in Bangalore, so I listed out about 48 pulses. that are available for uh, processing of which only a, uh, a few of them are being taken into the main fold because of their uh, culinary requirements so there are quite a lot of pulses and each one is different so when you talk of grain processing or even if you take uh, pulses there are so many pulses that you can see so each one is different and each one has a different type of a gum between the seed coat and the cotyledon so some of these gums are um, water soluble some of them are oil soluble and therefore the processing depends on the type of pulse that is being uh, considered for the uh, process uh, for uh, value added products 
That's what I said. So it, grain processing in general, it means different things to different people. So if we, a food technologist is, uh, thank you. So if a food technologist is looking at the grain, uh, from an engineer's perspective, uh, because of the uh, anatomical, uh, you know, parts of the grain, the processing requirements also keep varying. So in the case of pulses, if we see that uh, it is a dicotyledon, we would like to have pulses uh, without any broken edges. The pulses should be whole and they should be shining, shining enough to see your face in it. Uh, recent uh, studies at the Institute, Institute and elsewhere have indicated that the protein layers are available at the outer periphery of the grain and therefore polishing is detrimental to these proteins and therefore polishing is avoided. I think you have seen a very famous chef coming up on the TV and uh, showing that these are pulses with have, which are having higher protein. It's not that they are increasing the protein by any means, but they are not polishing the grains. So as time goes by, we have seen that the processing methodology also has changed. So basically pulsing, pulse milling would be either primary, secondary or, or tertiary. So all of us are aware of these things. I will not go into details. So here today I'll be trying to talk about uh, the secondary and tertiary processing uh, methods that have been developed at this department. So generally, as I, I already mentioned, I think I don't need to go about uh, all these things we have uh, our uh, earlier speakers mentioning it. Basically, pulse milling is to convert the pulse into dal. Dal is split, unhusked cotyledon. So that dal is what is further taken up for processing. Of course, there are certain pulses which are eaten uh, without dehusking also. For example, green gram. So it, it depends on which grain we are uh, handling and what is the product that we are handling. Basically, to loosen the husk, there are two methods. Either it is wet or it is dry. So depending on the nature of the gum, whether it is water-soluble or all-soluble, the type of pre-processing method is chosen. So in wet processing method, the grains are soaked in water for a specified duration. Excess water is drained out, and then it is tempered and dried, and then taken back for milling. So the milling would remove the husk and split the dal and separate them, and then you separate the dal from the brokens, remove the brokens and take the dal for further consumption. So in the dry processing method, what happens is, since the uh, cotyledon is tightly wound around the, uh, sorry, the, since the seed coat is tightly wound around the cotyledon, uh, any oil addition would not go into the grain. So we need the oil to go between the seed coat and the grain. So only then the loosening can take place. So what they usually do is they scarify or pit the grains. That is, they scratch the outer layers of the uh, husk or seed coat. And then oil is added, vegetable oil. So uh, vegetable oil is added to the extent of 0.3 to 0.5 percent, depending on the grain. And then they are tempered and then dried in, usually uh, it's dried in the sun. Today we have uh, mechanical dryers which can do the same job. And then they are built in a dehusker. So the dal is then graded to remove brokens. Uh, the main product would be the dal and unhusked grains. Uh, work also has been going on in, um, in our institute on the uh, nutrient and the micronutrient uh, composition of the byproducts of uh, the dal processing industry. For example, if uh, husk is being thrown, so from that husk, would there be any phytochemical or any nutrient, micronutrient that can be retrieved from it so that that can be made use of in the mainstream. And during this process, there are there, there are some grains which, which would be unhusked in nature or uh, they would not have been split. So they are separated during the grading process and it's put back into the dehuller with a different setting. So this is uh, the commercial uh, flow diagram that uh, uh, is followed for uh, pulse milling. So you have cleaning and size grading. Uh, size grading is very important to remove the uh, uh, impurities and also to have grains of the same size. Even though the variety is the same, there is a difference in the size. And therefore, when it goes into the further processing machines, because of the gap that has been uh, adjusted there, some of the grains may escape. So bold pulses are taken up 
and uh, if it is a, um, a dry milling process so you would have a pitting that is done there uh, and uh, you temper it and you sieve it to get out, take out the fine husk and dust and then you have the oil or water mixing that is done and it is conditioned for a certain period of time and after that it's taken for dehusking and sieved once again to remove the fine husk and powder sorry for the time lag there and you get what are known as dehusked holes that is the pulse the husk has been removed but it has not been split into cotyledons so that is commercially known as gota and gota is again conditioned again there is a heat treatment that is given to it and it is further split and and uh, the resultant is uh, sieved and you take out the fine uh, broken there and the residual gota goes back for conditioning and the dehus split that is dal is uh, aspirated to remove any fine particles or any husk layers there and it is polished and then this one is taken as grade one dal so this is what the industry does and during the process of uh, dehusking and splitting so uh, the dehus dal that comes in um, as a result of the process is aspirated to remove the husk polished and this is ca called as grade 2 dal so this is the commercial method of doing it so this is quite cumbersome now um, in in the, in the uh, context of atmanirbhar bharat so our scientists earlier scientists who worked on this area they recognized the need to see that we could empower the farmers themselves to do the processing so with 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 result of which you know many dal milling systems have been developed at this institute so i will look at cftr machinery there are many other uh, institute also who have uh, worked on uh, you know dehusking and uh, splitting of pulses i am concentrating only on cftr machinery so if you look at the hierarchy of uh, the process so first we had a hand operated dal mill and this was a uh, project of uh, a student's project um, guided by dr pp kurian and uh, they came out with a hand operated dal mill which would give 40 kg per hour and then a modern dal mill was uh, set up which which was at 1 ton per hour and then later on they had a versatile dal mill which was uh, developed i'm sorry thank you so the versatile dal mill that was um, developed which had a capacity of 250 to 300 kg per hour and then a mini dal mill this is the flagship pro project of, uh, of the institute of 100 150 kg per hour and then the mini versatile dal mill came into picture so this is the hierarchy of the dal mills uh, that were developed at the institute so the dry milling and wet milling processes were modified to suit this small capacity um, pulse milling systems that were developed at the institute so in the wet milling system it was nothing but just soaking the uh, grains in water draining excess water conditioning it then allowing it for some time and then drying it you know, probably in the sun so that uh, the farmer need not ex have extra machinery for it and then dehusk can split it grade it and then you get the dal if required you can polish it or you can weigh and bag it so this was the wet milling method that is followed so this is usually done for bengal gram which is a very easy to mill pulse so if you take the dry milling method so there is a pitting that is done first to see that the outer seed coat is scratched and oil is added so that is 0.3 to 0.5 percent of oil that is added to it and it is conditioned for some time to allow the oil to migrate between the cotyledon and the seed coat and then it is dried in the sun dehusked and split and then there is a separation that we do and uh, the dehusk and split pulses are taken weighed and bagged okay so in this process if there are any grains after the grading wherein they have not been uh, split into cotyledons they are taken back to the um, dehusking section so why did we uh, concentrate on small capacity pulse milling systems so pulse milling usually is done in large mills and uh, the farmer sells his produce so he uh, the transportation of the raw material from the rural areas to the processing centers 
and uh, if the farmer wants the pulse for his own consumption he has to buy it at the market rate or the commercial rates so there was no value addition for the farmer so to improve the economy of the farmers small capacity pulse milling systems were developed at the institute so this is the first version of the uh, you know hand operated dal mill that was done so dr korean mr ramkrishnaya late mr b s patel and mr pratap were the people who were involved in the work of developing this machinery and um, this uh, uh, has an emery cone inside which rotate inside inside a stationary wire mesh cage and uh, the process pulses are taken out and then you have to manually separate them so you have to winnow them and sieve them manually and it has a capacity of 40 kg per hour so later on when uh, this was um, given to people they said sir uh, it it takes a lot of effort for us to do this whole process can we motorize it so the motorized version was the mini dal mill that came out first so as i said it has a cone which has an abrasive uh, material that is coated on it and there is a stationary wire mesh cage inside which this cone rotates and this cone can move vertically up and down so if it moves up the gap between the abrasive surface and the screen reduces and this is this is for smaller pulses and if if you bring it down the gap increases and this is for bigger pulses because of the uh, particular cone angle and the uh, speed of rotation this was found to be uh, suitable i'm sorry uh, this is not visible to you uh, it was found to be suitable only for bolder pulses like uh, chickpea that is uh, uh, bengal gram tur or pigeon pea and then uh, also for bengal gram and peas that is matar and soybean so only these are these were the pulses that could be milled in it it had a capacity of 100 to 150 kg per hour and required one plus half hp half hp for the grader one for the main machine with a space requirement of 2 to 4 uh, meters 2 uh, by 4 meters and a dehulling percentage of 98% and the yield of dal was 76 to 78% with the brokens of 1 to 2%. So this was very very popular. So um this was uh, taken up as a program and about 200 mini dal mills these machines you can see are at uh, the uh, factory site wherein they are ready for dispatch. So they were distributed to farmers across the country and self help groups. So a survey was done wherein uh, they went and surveyed uh, the pulse uh, farmers who were uh, available there and they they were in the had some self help groups and then they identified those people and then those those people were you know brought to cftri and training was given on the operation of the machinery at cftri and the machines were dispatched to them in some case uh, in a lighter way in some in one case what happened was there were few farmers who said we have the lorry with us this machine is going to be loaded on the lorry and we are going to sit in the same lorry you know as if it was their prized property they they you know they were hugging the machine then they were taking it to their place so they were so passionate about it and after a couple of years a feedback survey was also conducted to see how much of money they were able to earn so it was uh, it was seen that a tribal farmer couple no extra labor a tribal farmer couple could earn a profit of 400 to 500 kg i mean 400 to 500 rupees per day in the early 90s so that's a huge 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 economic benefit that the farmer could get and uh, the feedback also gave a request that there should be a mill for all pulses not only for the bold pulses so with that in mind um oh, this is one of the uh, photographs were in uh, you know it was inaugurated and then you can see that uh, the hero of the day has been garlanded and then ladies are able to operate it so it was that popular then a mini versatile dal mill was developed which is suitable for uh, all pulses and uh, similar capacities 100 150 kg per hour but the power requirement raised from uh, one and a half to 
two HP and both of them being single phase. That is, if you have an AEH connection at home, you can use this machine there and the yields are also compatible. And in here, you can do milling of all pulses and even you can see that you can convert horse gram into horse gram done, which hitherto was not possible. So this was possible in this machine. So this is how the machine looks like. So the, this is the de-husking section. Uh, you feed the material on top and you have a feed gate here. You adjust the feed gate uh, to see that the material goes into it. And then as it comes out, there is an aspiration chamber. This is the aspiration chamber. And the husk is taken and collected in the cyclone collector and discharged separately. The products after milling fall onto a reciprocating sifter, which has two sieves. There's a small openings wherein the brokens come out. And in the middle, you have the dal that comes out. And the whole grains which have been dehusked but not split come out at the end. This is collected and at the end of the day, it is passed back through the same machine for conversion into dal. So this was the mini versatile dal mill. Then came the requirement for a higher capacity, that is 250 to 300 kg per hour. But the power went into three-phase sector. It uh, required about 16 HP. So this would today cost about uh, 25, 26 lakhs. And uh, dehulling was 98%. The yield of dal was 75, 78% and the breakage was two to three percent and this has minimum dust pollution if you go into big dal mill uh, it is virtually impossible to take a photograph there you would have only the dust particles that are coming in front of the lens so this has minimal dust pollution and uh, it has reduced transportation cost and rural employment generation is possible so there could be one such versatile mini i mean versatile dal mill set up in a village wherein all the farmers can come use it pay the milling charges and take it back. So this was the success story of the versatile dal mill. And this is how it looks like. So we have uh, the system at our institute. So this has a capacity of 250 to 300 kg per hour. So the uh, study did not stop there. They wanted to have a system wherein dependence on the climatic condition uh, I mean, or sun for drying is removed. So that's why this arrow mark here. So the conditioning and tempering system was by using electrical heaters. So which is making the whole uh, industry not to depend on the sun for drying. And when it is dried in the sun, there is a lot of contamination of other material that is going to come into the pulse and therefore that is negated. So this is uh, the flow diagram showing wherein you condition the uh, material in the uh, heating chamber, you mill it, you aspirate it, grade it, and you get the various products. So this is a modern dal mill, and this has a capacity of uh, one ton per hour. And this is how the whole system looks like. So all of these are uh, components wherein it's available indigenously, so you don't have uh, any imported uh, you know, components on this, and everything is in one house. Today, if you see the conditioning chamber that we had talked about wherein we were using electrical heaters, today uh, industries have come out with a system wherein they use these uh, solar par parabolic concentrators and the uh, sun rays are concentrated onto the focal point and in the focal point they have what is known as thermic fluid. And the thermic fluid is used as a source of heat for you know, drying the grains. So such modern systems have come in today. So let's look at some of the uh, products and uh, value addition that we are talking about. As uh, Director Madam was uh, telling, uh, so many products are there that we can think of, right? So from Bajji, Besan, Laddu, Bonda, if I read this, I would be sounding like a hotel waiter. So you have all, so all these products that are there that are made from pulses. It's huge. And this list is growing. It's not going to stop at this. It has now gone into the area of uh, vegan meat also, or meat and lag, as Madam was talking about. So pulses are there. And uh, we also have a formulation for uh, puppet dough. And to make the uh, dough into uh, puppets, we also have a machine. Now, this is a free technology that is available on our website. So uh, it has a very low cost. It costs about uh, 13, 14,000 rupees. 
you can make 300 to 400 puppets per hour if you use a rolling pin you can make only 60 per hour so here you can make 400 per hour and it can also make puppets from horse gram horse gram floor uh, puppets are very hard to make but this machine can do that job also so at one press uh, you can have uh, four puppets that are made like this so the, the design drawings are available on our website so under free technologies so anybody can download the design drawings and then manufacture and sell it so this is how four puppets are available at one shot and you can adjust the thickness also so you can make uh, pani puris or puris or chapatis or rotis or whatever so the machine is available for people to um, make use of another product that has been uh, developed is quick cooking germinated and dehydrated pulses uh, not only for bengal gram but other pulses also have been done so the uh, time taken for cooking is reduced drastically as a time and energy saving and which has a shelf uh, life of more than six months so you have uh, soaking of the grains germinating the grains and then uh, there are some treatment protocols which because of the te technological uh, you know um, protocols i am not able to reveal what treatment we are giving and then you try it to get the uh, quick cooking germinated pulses so there is a patent also that has been filed for this particular process so uh, what uh, has been envisaged is uh, a system with a capacity of 100 kg per day plant and machinery costs about four lakhs so you need about uh, four by six meters of space and the processing cost is only about 28 to 30 rupees per kg so you can see the reduction in the um, the uh, cooking time with respect to the traditional uh, or unprocessed material and the processed material that we have from this uh, this particular technology so huge savings that you can think about so this is just a close up of the uh, um, bengal gram which is uh, developed at adwar adwar institute expanded horse gram so nobody ever thought that horse gram could be expanded so we have a product uh, we have a technology wherein it can be expanded so the expansion is two times and uh, um, it is good because the husk is also removed the uh, typical flavor of the horse gram is uh, is not there it could be used as an ingredient in health bars also so other products uh, you can think of save you can think of chakli you can think of bundi i showed that list earlier so i don't want to go into the details one another thing that i would like to add is that uh, we have uh, seen some initial studies that have uh, been done the type of um, machine that we use for pulverizing and making floor has an effect on the end product quality so even that is an area that we are working on intensively and uh, shortly we'll come out with some technology for that particular thing flaking of course you can uh, today we have technology for flaking of all pulses or all grains so you soak the grains you roast it um, process it depending on the type of grain flake it dry the uh, flakes sift it to remove the broken and get the head flakes so the uh, flakes from all grains can be brought about and this mix, uh, even if you um, make uh, flakes from pulses you could have a muesli type of product which is from all pulses and other grains as well so this is what i was talking about and there is a patented process for uh, yes, dry soup mixes from minor pulses so there is value addition to the minor pulses also and whoever thought that we could make soup from pulses so this i think this one is horse gram and this is moth bean so you are able to make even soup from pulses question is of course i don't have uh, an audience uh, wherein they could interact and say but the question is what product is this so this is the muesli i was talking about but what is this product so these are what are known as coated grains because it has it is wearing a coat so you could coat it with whatever you want whether it's a sweet coating or a savory coating or whatever or a masala coating that you want so that can be done and that can be used as a health bar or a health uh, product okay there are a lot of things that we could uh, talk about so um, dal analog is another area where we are working on 
uh, we would like to see that uh, we can bring about some dal which is lower in cost and probably fortified also and uh, we have products uh, wherein uh, pulses are also an an ingredient in it due to shortage of time i'm not uh, listing all of those products here of course your rasam sambar is also there uh, we have uh, done some initial studies wherein there is a rasam cube you just put into boiling water boil it for about 2 minutes you have rasam ready or you have dehydrated vegetables that have also been put into it and you have a sambar cube so if you have uh, no time and there is a guest who has come in you can just put these cubes into boiling water and you can get rasam and sambar and in fact uh, there was also a, uh, there's also a product which is uh, energy food which was earlier given um, to children so there is a high uh, protein energy food that has been developed by i think our director madam also is a part of the team there so with these few thoughts i uh, take this opportunity to thank the organizers for uh, giving me a, an opportunity to talk and the present work work we have uh, done at the institute should go forward yes uh, i think i would stop here thank you for the opportunity and if there are any queries with respect to uh, the technologies that we have developed of course our technology transfer business development is always there to help you out thank you all thank you so much sir for covering uh, uh, right from hand operated dal mill to versatile uh, mini dal mill and expanded horse gram to uh, soup mix from uh, dals it is a very wide uh, experience and then you have uh, nicely put it in and uh, it is i am sure that the listeners are enlightened by of your uh, experience and the thoughts thank you so much and we have the second speaker of the day uh, shri arjun uh, technical advisor jm foods private limited salem it is one of the uh, largest pulse processing uh, industry of uh, the country and uh, incidentally uh, shri arjun sir is also an uh, engineering uh, graduate and uh, he is having more than uh, 35 years of industrial experience on plant and machinery and agro processing he is a technical advisor to jm global foods private limited and uh, he will be uh, delivering uh, talk on the topic uh, pulse processing and value addition an industrial perspective over to you sir yeah hello uh, good morning all of you am i audible am i audible yes sir you are audible please carry on and uh, please share your uh, uh, ppt yeah uh, my ppt is there uh, thank you uh respected dr sri devi singh director cftra sri satyendra rao head technology transfer and business development cftra sri shrinivas head green tech science and technology cftra and dr uh, jaydeep senior principal scientist and other cftra officers online offline and uh, i am joined from salem i am at jam global foods office and my colleagues with me and all others on the uh, direct live very good morning <clears throat> the day will start with the sunrise and the sun will progress and the finally end of the day the sun sets every day has got a purpose and meaning and today is one of the wonderful day means that we are commemorating this world pulse day 2022 the fourth pulse day as we are celebrating and uh, i take this opportunity to wish all of us those who are with uh, pulse processing activities and the world community for a great pulse day and many more days to come in the first place i would like to register my sincere thanks and Uh, we are proud from jayam that giving an a chatter on a wonderful day very auspicious day to be a part of cftra 
presentations and uh, celebrations. Thank you all of you for this wonderful opportunity. On behalf of JM, we always uh, work close with CFTRI, which I will touch upon during my presentation. Uh, before I start, I would like to think of a diamond which is lying on the road, uh, not polished. And we would uh, think this is an ordinary stone. But if it in the right hands, uh, they, then it is getting polished, then the diamond really gets value. I would like to always think that uh, pulses have been the poor man with a poor man food and uh, but nowadays, slowly people started thinking it's not ordinary stone. It is a wonderful veg protein, the future protein powerhouse of the, of the world community. So with this opening uh, thought, I would like to get on to the industry perspective on pulse processing and value addition. Next slide, please. Yeah. So I always uh, say protein powerhouse, the pulses, because you have so many proteins uh, sources available, but uh, the naturally balanced and protein rich uh, the, uh, the pulses only can give. And as my earlier speakers as uh, narrated, it's environmentally sustainable because for the farming community is one of the wonderful uh, nitrogen fixation. Uh, activity by God given the genetical uh, uh, blessings to these pulses variety and uh, very very environmental uh, environmentally sustainable and now people are talking about the modern trend veg protein among the protein as you are all masters I would like to say the wedge protein is taking up a very big stand as our director has given in her opening remark. It, the demand is increasing up to 250% uh, but uh, uh, my thought is even it will multiply when we celebrate next year it will would have gone to three digits and four digits uh, requirement because it's catching up like anything and we know that we are sitting on a gold mine because we are the one of the largest producers and consumer worldwide, which the data uh, time and again we have seen. And here I would like to uh, really think of uh, go out of the box, box thinking in terms of industry and inter uh, institution interaction can bring in lot of uh, innovative ideas, which I have uh, another future slides coming up. Yeah. Cultivation, see my today's I would like to quickly touch up on the points which are coming down. Cultivation and harvest management, processing as a commodity and processing as a food industry and processing to suit nutraceutical applications and pharma applications and followed by using the modern age uh, technologies, uh, namely the e-commerce in Pulse industry. This is also one thought I would thought as a from industrial perspective, I would share the forum so that we can also think of adding these uh, areas for our thought. Forum. Next slide, please. See, uh, so much of activity is being done, even uh, still our uh, per capita uh, per acre uh, yield. Still, we can uh, improve upon various uh, modern cultivation techniques, and even the nowadays the temperature uh, differences in the cultivation playing a vital role in terms of crop failures. As we see, sometimes people say crop failure, and then uh, sufficient uh, uh, grams are not available for the industry to process. So these are the areas that now uh, temperature fluctuations and thermal shock, even uncomfort zone. Uh, temperature zones, uh, the crop uh, varieties that we must educate and the education is, has to be continuous form. Whatever changes from time to time, from day to day that are happening, the farming community should be uh, continually uh, uh, enriched with uh, information and then one area that the continual improvement is, uh, is one focus area I thought on this point I would like to uh, 
and second is the uh, wastages and damages as industrial person i when i receive as a agri produce we mainly buy bengal gram then we see a lot of uh, wastages are generating in the harvest areas and uh, post harvest management techniques some fungal attack this type of uh, after producing we are wasting uh, a quite amount of um, uh, the produce which can be minimized to maximum extent yeah this 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 slide i would like to slightly go in detail <clears throat> we all know the process uh, uh, of pulsing has been uh, where technology as yes, uh, our uh, um, sri sachendra said is, is from veda time we have been using this uh, we have mentioned even the vedas are uh, believed that it has come from the gods uh, directly so which means the, our uh, pulses have a great great uh, root but also we over a period of time we developed the various processing but what are the areas that we still uh, scope for improvement i thought i would like to list a little bit the raw material specification nowadays what happened still a lot of human interventions in terms of uh, uh, selecting the raw materials and uh, you not know, fixing the uh, quality and uh, the pricing for the raw material it's not scientific and at the jm we have uh, worked till last 20 years in terms of bringing into a standardization and now we buy raw material even though it is agri produced we have a, a devised a system to fix in the raw material specification and for instance let it be moisture content let it be uh, the 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 mud content and what are the other grades uh, based on that price fixation can be done even i would like to go out of the box thinking as other uh, maybe some of the uh, uh, countries in abroad they follow even estimating the protein content and price fixing these are the, that will be the really uh, very very good for the farming community to really get the right price then coming to cleaning and grading we all know that cleaning and grading is being done for quite, quite long years but what is that further what i mean upgraded cleaning and grading process is uh, that during the cleaning and grading there is a possibility of damaging the grams so which has to be avoided and graded gram as uh, sri uh, srinivas sir said the graded grams processing definitely helps in a bigger way to produce right quality product so that way uh, for instance we are now currently working on a project to, to implement a color sorting system even for raw material to straight away remove the uh, no various unwanted uh, grams that are uh, getting through the up, uh, further upstream processes this will help uh, this type of latest technology has to be come into the picture we have already for over long years we have been using color color sorting system for the final uh, produce we manufacture fried gram in a big way and for the fried gram we have uh, the first to introduce various color sorting techniques right from the beginning now we have evolved a new latest technologies for uh, product similarly even color sorters can be implemented on the cleaning and grading section itself so that uh, the the further processing is improved also there are uh, grading processes uh, we have to be continuously monitor not only certain uh, removing of uh, agri produce and uh, uh, immature dals like that also we we grade it into very fine levels of uh, various uh, sizes so that the and, the and each and every size has to be processed separately then coming to the yield people now after the cleaning grading we we go various processes as we have already seen uh, uh, for all uh, the various different types of processing the only miss on the industry is they don't have very efficient and effective processes in terms of fertility temperatures or let it be the, the uh, gravity separators like that uh, certain areas will help in terms of improving the yield for example the raw material if you ready the uh, finished goods then your profitability will increase uh, at a, a, at jm we have uh, really worked a lot on this and then we could say we have nearing to uh, uh, yeah yeah 
very stabilized and established process control system in our place. And then the waste minimization, for example, the dust generation, as I said daily, the very traditional dal mills we go, you will only see dust particles like fog, then Delhi. So, uh, waste minimization comes in terms of uh, dust extraction systems and uh, handling the uh, product in the elevators and various further uh, transfer methods uh, to avoid damages. We are uh, also continuously working in terms of waste minimization. And then implementing certain uh, production practices uh, would really help in terms of people are hesitating in the oil industry, how, why we can implement all these things. But uh, this now industry can afford in future in implement a very, uh, very uh, good hygienic and safety, food safety product, uh, production practices. And this is one interesting area, waste to wealth creation approach. Uh, what happened when uh, the dust or small bits or uh, other uh, immature, we have to continuously think how to add value. For instance, husk can be taken into feed industry, which is a traditional way of thinking. Then whether the husk can be get into fiber extract, that will be the one of the thinking. So wherever waste that are generated, that has to be thought that it's burning, then, then it has to, how we can create wealth uh, from the waste is a, is a continuous uh, thought process that industry has to follow. The one more industry, one, the other point, which is very, very important point, those days the power and thermal uh, cost have been very negligible when compared to the product cost, but the last few decades, the power and thermal uh, cost has become a very, very a vital uh, cost se sector. So uh, we have been thinking of changing uh, the traditional way of thermal heating, furnace oil or the fossil fuels. We have uh, successfully implemented and we are proudly to say that we are the first to implement the uh, biogasifying system uh, into thermal process for our uh, heat requirement. And also power can be generated at uh, various uh, methods, economical methods. These two cost centers can be addressed. And even there are continual improvement in the thermal uh, energy uh, systems, which can be thought of. And they are all, uh, uh, though it is uh, in investment prohibitive, but their payback periods are very attractive. And you have uh, uh, and very efficient systems are now uh, coming up. And we can look at all those uh, power and thermal energy efficiency has to be improved. Finally, we have to, whatever we produce, people sell on a sample basis. That has to go out. Then we have to sell on your product on a standardization and specification. We must be able to say my product will have this kind of a specification. And the industry should uh, look into setting their standards for this, uh, their producers. Yeah, thank you. Next slide. Yeah, graduating from commodity to high-tech food ingredients. This is one important area that mainly this slide I would like to touch upon the thought process among the industry that we are only a commodity people. It has to change because what we are having is a diamond. Then we must think of that we are having a diamond, how to polish it. So now the industry is also opening up. Even within the veg protein areas and the pulses are not at all much of GMO. So there will be readily... Uh, people will welcome and the future will be pulse based protein will have a great very big future that uh, we will be seeing going to see so then, then uh, there are food industry application we can look up rte ready to eat ready to cook uh, for, uh, without damaging the uh, nutritional value and also we can add some functional improvements uh, for the particular application then we can look at nutraceutical applications food as a food supplement and then protein we can look at starch and fibers in terms of in fitting in uh, the nutraceutical applications uh, yes industry still we it is not common maybe some of the very uh, large industry they are thinking about it but my only uh, requirement to the industry thought is that people should think we can also look at these kind of uh, high value added product even up to the pharma pharmaceutical application 
using the bioactive compounds in the pulses they are all available which can be think of even getting into pharma grade that could be our uh, target for industry to work towards from thinking of commodity to high tech products and also now the personal care cosmetics industry has taken up very big body building as madam also touched this point body building requirements we have wonderful in our pulses facials like that so we can look at uh, these are the areas to change our thought process we are not a commodity manufacturer we are a high tech product food ingredient manufacturer that has to come and also the cattle feed industry which is uh, always a rice industry and our product can fit in at various levels one industry should have this type of range of product so that they can sustain and grow thank you next slide please yeah this is one important area nowadays a holistic formulation of, of, of approach what i want to to say the agri produce na, is now uh, the shifting towards the supply chain management very near the uh, very near the growing area so one has to think of instead of setting up the factory in their market area it is better to go think of setting up huge factories and facilities at the farming community wherever it is being produced in large quantities that will reduce a lot of uh, transportation cost and also the uh, better price relationship to the farming community the farmer even we can think of a uh, one truckload comes from the farmer within one and a half hours we can uh, completely grade and give them the uh, the uh, the results and the price uh, uh, for the uh, pulses he supplied so those type of thinking has to come to the industry and uh, as we have already talked about uh, veg protein and this gives us a huge opportunity to think in terms of so only thing is our thought process has to change next slide please here i would like try to fix up some kind of uh, value creation process concept as we know the traditional cleaning and grading dehulling and normal uh, earlier as earlier days we go uh, grinding and make use the floors for basic applications and then fractionation methods this is a combination of grinding with the air classification with this we can go up to protein up to 60% then wet processes protein isolates and process which would uh, give up to 90% even we must uh, think of uh, one even a small uh, scale sector should look at in future how to address all these uh, areas that we have his footprint in the business next slide please next slide please oh, no. sorry pre previous slide yeah see uh, process and product uh, innovations yes uh, uh, srinivas sir has very nicely put that uh, quoted gram we cannot forget lifetime such a real innovation uh, uh, of debiting the quoted grams uh, one area which i we have uh, jm always continuously believe that industrial institution uh, interaction for technology development will definitely pave a big way in a lot of path breaking ideas for instance we have been uh, working uh, with uh, cftri and we are very very happy to say in this forum that uh, the gota from uh, thurdal process been a uh, uh, very uh, unsolvable uh, question in front of us and then we tried the whole sambar dal as a q3 sambar dal q3 is the three q's that has addressed and we have developed with the help of uh, cftri and as the quoted fried gram uh, for the whole fried gram we have developed various uh, flavored uh quoted grams which is a very successful development with cftri i when i talk about quoted fried grams i always think when i am in the uh, school days when i come from school i take a handful of fried gram and put as uh, sugar on top of it and have a gulp of water and the entire evening for my game it is uh, i am charged so in the quoted gram the thought process is how the youth can be attracted towards our uh traditional i also call it as a grandma product 
traditional grandma product though the uh, youth uh, is a huge market in india then we can go with uh, fortified grab flour with essential uh, micronutrients also we have worked and over and above i am very happy to share that we are already discussing with uh, cftri for uh, ma managing the floatlands uh, problems of the uh, pulses that are happening and especially with the bengal gram what we are dealing with uh we are working towards certain uh, pro specific projects and this this type of interaction uh would help in terms of paving a new way new thoughts and also as the demand in the future is coming in a big way challenges then in the, this type of very active interaction would lead uh, definitely path breaking ideas and new innovations next slide please this one area we must think of uh, making use the best use of e-commerce for our uh, either procurement of pulses also and in marketing of our products the e-commerce is going to play a very very vital role and we uh, as industrial uh, perspective we must look at uh, make use of the e-commerce uh, into our business next slide please to come up uh, as a summing up of my thought one the supply chain efficiency management efficiencies are the very very important for the business to sustain and grow so that that one area industry has to look into very very closely let it be the raw material procurement from raw material till the finished goods delivery uh, the supply chain management uh, efficiency has to be valued then the production technologies though uh, traditional technologies Uh, are there and those are absolute and outdated technology has to be replaced with uh, newer technologies and some path breaking process innovation has to happen so that uh, we can make our uh, pulses into a high protein rich product to supply the world community as a wedge protein next point please yeah this one area i always as i uh, before i conclude that we are going to see shortly we protein the protein powerhouse especially the our pulses are the protein powerhouse for the world in the future i think uh, we work with one of the fantastic products and on this auspicious day uh, i take this opportunity once again uh, to thank uh, all uh, cftri for this giving us jm uh, this opportunity uh, for being a part of this today's celebrations thank you very much and thanks one and all thank you so thank much you so much you have uh, really brought out the need for enlightening the farmers to the high tech products from uh, uh, pulses maybe the cosmetics to the bioactive components the possibilities thank you so much for uh, being part of today's program and uh, today on the occasion of uh, world uh, pulse day we heard two experienced engineers speaking on the pulse engineering and aptly bringing out the importance of the pulses and uh, what we have to focus for the future thank you so much uh, we have come to the end of this program and i request dr a jaydeep senior principal scientist uh, grain science and technology department to render out of thanks good afternoon everybody so dignitaries in the hall as well as the dignitaries attending from different uh, places other participants ladies and gentlemen so it is my privilege to propose vote of thanks in connection with the world pulse day organized by the cscr cftri so on behalf of the organizing committee so i wish to profusely thank our director dr sri devi singh for the remarks on the world pulse day covering the nutritional aspects and uh, diversification of uses So we are also thankful to the director for the swift action and encouragement in celebrating the uh, World Pulse Day. 
So we wish to thank Sri Satyendra Rao, head ETBD, for the opening remarks on the role of pulse in our life, varieties of pulses, and diversity in the uses, and also for highlighting the importance of the World Pulse Day. Sri A. Srinivas, head grain sensor technology, has taken up us through the challenges and the CFTRA contribution in pulse machinery development, processing aspects, and value-added products. So we wish to thank him for the uh, lead lecture. On this occasion, I wish to uh, recollect the names of former scientists of uh, GST who have rendered yeoman service in the field of pulse processing, like Dr. Kirin, Dr. Narasimha, uh, Sri Ramakrishnaya, uh, uh, B.S. Patel, uh, Dr. V.M. Pradabe, and many more. So today, uh, we were also fortunate to have an industry representative, uh, Sri Arjun, Managing Director, Jaram Foods Salem, for enlightening the, us about the industrial challenges in pulse processing and the leadership in opening novel ideas to young entrepreneurs to take up the field of uh, pulse products. So we also wish to thank uh, Dr. Usha Dharmaraj for ably comparing the program. So finally, I thank the team CFTRA, especially the PMC department and computer center for making the World Pulse Day webinar a grand success. Thank you, one and all.